All right, I put together this uh, little app for a map analyzer. Um, basically, it's to practice if statements. Um, the idea here is as you move the mouse around, it'll highlight what cell, what tile you're on. The tiles are identified by rows and columns. And you can see down here, right, if I go here, it's row one, column three. Okay, row four, column eight, etc. All right. The main purpose is in the this output right here, this, this element here, should show what kind of tile I'm on, sand, tree, hills, or water. So for, it should be printing sand out, and when I'm over here, it should be printing water. All right? And to do that, we're going to do an if statement that tests the row number, the row value, and the column value. Um, you can switch between different levels. So you'll have to do different if statements for each level. And I'll do the first couple levels for you just to get you started, and you'll do the rest. All right. So for the code here, um, in the video description, there's a link to this code. So download that and then extract it. And uh, don't worry about um, any of the other files here. All you need is solutions.js. In solutions.js, you can see these global variables, row and column. They're going to store the row and column of the tile that the mouse is on. And then um, each level has a solution. So level one solution, level two solution, level three solution, etc. And basically each of these functions will get called depending on what the current level is. Okay, so it'll run that code and then it'll run uh, output this depending on what level you're on. All right, so level one, I also in the comments here um, tell you what kind of a if statement you should use, so binary or chained. Um, just to make sure, sometimes you can do it in either way, but I want you to do it a certain way because it's more efficient that way. All right, so here, let's start with level one. We want to use a binary if statement. And then this is how we can um, set our output text. Basically, we find the element with the ID current tile and set its HTML to be whatever we want, sand, water, tree, hills, that kind of stuff. Um, and for level one, this right here is that current tile element. Okay, so I'm going to, for level one, basically say, you know what, all I care about is my column numbers. And if the column is less than or equal to four, right, I'm gonna be in the sand area. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in the water area. So it's an if else, either sand or water. So my binary if statement, I'm simply gonna go if, and I forgot the number already, four, so less than or equal to four. If my global variable column is less than or equal to four, then I'm going to take this code right here, and I'm going to set the inner HTML of that element to say sand. Else, I must be in the other half of the screen, and I'll set the inner HTML to say water. All right, save that. So let's go back here. And now, look at that. It says sand. When I'm in this section, as soon as I cross over, changes to water. All right, so water, sand. Level one, complete. All right, let's go to level two. Now I've got three possibilities, right? It's either hills, sand, or water. Um, so for this, I'm going to do a chain selection statement. I think that's what it says here. Level 2 solution, use chained. So the first thing I'll check for is the hills. So that again, I'm just looking at column. Um, so if I'm less than or equal to 2, I'm going to be hills. So I'll go if my global variable column is less than or equal to 2, then we'll take this output text and set it to hills. Um, and now I'm gonna do an else if. Now, the cool thing about this is, um, a lot of times people think, oh, I have to check if, uh, for sand, I have to check if my column is greater than or equal to three and it's less than or equal to seven. Um, in this case, you don't actually have to do that if you're doing a chain selection statement. Um, because if column isn't less than or equal to two, that's the only way it's going to get to this if statement. So we know that this is false. We already know that column is not less than or equal to 2, which means that it must be 3 or higher. So all I have to do is I have to check the upper limit that it's less than or equal to 7. 
So I can go column less than or equal to seven. And then my output text should say, I think this was sand. And then my last thing will just be an else, right? If it's not less than or equal to two and it's not less than or equal to seven, it must be in here. So I can just do an else and I'll paste that and this should be water. All right, let's test level two. So go to level two, we've got hills, sand, water, perfect. Okay, I'll do one more level three for you guys. Um, notice it's very similar to level two, except I've just got hills and sand. So it's tempting to just do the exact same solution as level two and just go hills, sand, hills, but that's not as efficient because we're doing the same code to set it to hills twice. Um, it's more efficient to do this as a binary if statement, as I say here. So to do this as a binary, there's actually two ways to do it, and I'll show you both, is we could check for hills first. So hills, I need to check two areas. Is it less than or equal to two, or is it greater than or equal to eight? My columns, right? So to do that, we're going to use uh, our logical or operator. So I'm going to start with if column is less than or equal to two, and then the two vertical lines is the logical operator or, which means either this expression is true or column is greater than or equal to eight, or that's true. So if either of those are true, it means I'm either in the left section of hills or the right section of hills. So then I should output hills, oops, hills. And then I can just do an else, right? If I'm here or here, do hills, else I must be in the middle. So do sand, output sand. Do sand. Okay, let's see if the level three works. So I'm sand, hills, hills. Perfect. Okay. And like I said, I know this is only one line of code, so repeating it twice wouldn't be a huge deal. But imagine if it was more code than this, right? You'd be repeating the identical code. So it's better to do this. If I'm here or here, do this, else do this. Because really there's only two possibilities, hills or sand. Now, we can switch this up though. Um, instead of using the logical operator or, we could use and. And I could check for sand first. So sand, I would have to say, hey, if I'm, if column is greater than or equal to three and it's less or equal to seven, right? If I'm bounded by three and seven, then make it sand. So to make it bounded, we would have to say, if column is greater than or equal to three, and column is less than or equal to seven, right? So if, the, if both of those are true, that's what the and does. Double ampersand is the and operator. Um, it has, says that both of those have to be true. So if this is greater than or equal to three and it's less than seven, I know I'm bounded by these two areas. So then I wanna say sand, else I wanna say hills. Okay, so save that. And now we go to level three and it still works. Okay, so two alternative solutions. Both of these work. This one just chooses to use the and to search for the sand first. The or one was looking for the hills. All right, so that's level one, two, and three done for you. Um, level four, five, six, etc., are all for you to do. Take note of the use binary or use chain. Make sure you're following those instructions. And uh, level four, five, and six are very similar to one, two, and three, except you'll be using the row values, right? Mm -hmm. If row is less than this, otherwise do this. Um, but then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, those get a little more interesting. And hopefully they uh, make you think a little bit. All right, hope that made sense. Uh, the, remember the link to the code is in the description of the video. Um, all right, take care and see you in the next video.